Well, jumping around a little bit, just because you gave that answer, um, at the end of this episode, episode seven, uh, he gets a little emotional. And you mentioned earlier that he was a little concerned about how he would be portrayed and how people would feel about the way he treats his teammates. What was it like being in the room while discussing that? That was um, stunning because that only took place 45 minutes into our first interview with him. So we're 45 minutes into an eight hour, year and a half process. <laughs> I, I met him nine months before that um, and started kind of planting seeds for we're going to go places that may be uncomfortable, et cetera. Um, and in my limited exposure to him, seeing how he treated me and how he treated those around him, I saw him as a nice guy. And I know that that reputation is not one that is, that's not the first adjective that comes to mind when people start describing the Michael Jordan that they know from the image that's, that's portrayed you know, on television and on the internet and all that. If you Google Michael Jordan, nice guy, <laughs> I'm serious. We tried this because we had discussions as this process. That's a good one. I'm serious. You're not going to get this plethora of stories about how nice Michael Jordan is. If you Google Michael Jordan, nice guy, you actually get the opposite of that. Um, and I was interested in dispelling that myth or, or giving him the opportunity to at least, because in my experience, he was respectful to, to everyone that he dealt with, including me and my crew. So I knew that I want, I still have the, the sheet of paper um, or the 11 sheets of paper that I went into that interview with. Uh, <laughs> and I was just looking at them uh, for reference the other day. And it's on like the second page. It's early in the interview, um, but it is, you know, is all of that intensity and all the success that you've achieved worth the cost of being perceived as a nice guy? Because by and large, in my estimation, you are not. Um, and I you can see his expression. I think he was a little bit surprised by the question or like, he almost had this look like, well, I think I'm a nice guy. I don't know. And then <laughs> he started to get more and more intense. And by the end of that, I mean, it's 45 minutes into the first interview he was tearing up and he had that again, mm -hmm. that finger I told you guys about in the first time I met him, that huge finger that comes out <laughs> and bends a foot and a half. He put that finger up and started to choke up and I could see a tear in the corner of his eye. And I'm thinking like, what is going on here? But it's funny if you talk about like, what are the things that elicit that kind of emotion from him showing him, his mom reading a letter home from him, so his mom's mm -hmm. voice, his mom's face, family elicits emotion from him and his philosophy, how he lives his life defending that. He is so adamant about that, that he gets emotional about it. And he said he finished and he put his hand up and he said, break. And he leaned up and got out of his chair and I got up, there was a, a bathroom behind me and I, I got up too and I didn't know where to go because I was blocked by the light. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll just go in here for a little bit and, and, and chill out. I went in there. I remember sitting there just like splashing water in my face. Like that's a moment that, that is going to be a powerful moment in this documentary. I don't know where it's going to go. We just started this process. Um, we mm -hmm. were two years from even anyone seeing where we are now, but it's just one of those moments. And that was proceeded 20 minutes before that by his his belly laugh when I, I mentioned the traveling cocaine circus. It was like, all right, he's going to go there. And, he's also going to go here. and those are the two places that I was afraid that he wouldn't go, that he wouldn't be candid and tell me honest stories. And then he might not be as emotional and vulnerable um, as we wanted. And he, he checked off those two boxes in the first 45 minutes. So that's where the whole project changed after that Q&A. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.